Hello, in today's video I'll be showing you a variety of ways to connect wires together, which can be useful in many situations, such as installing a stereo, replacing a harness, fixing the damaged section of a wire, and so much more. Whenever connecting wires, the first thing we'll need is a tool to remove the insulated portion of the wire to expose the wire strands, and allow you to connect the wires. And here I got two of my favorites. Both of these can strip wires, cut wires, and crimp wires, but they do strip wires differently. This first one adjusts to the size of the wire automatically. But there are certain wires like these that have a coating on them and they just can't strip properly. So in that case I do prefer this other style. But for this style, you either have to know the wire gauge or find the best one for the wire that'll cut and pull off the insulation without damaging the strands of the wire. And if you don't know the size, it's always better to try a bigger size and if it doesn't work, just try the next smaller size. This way, you avoid damaging the strands and you can try again. Cause once you cut into the wires, you can't put them back. You'll have to shorten the wire even further. Let's try out this wire stripper on the wire without that slippery coating. When you're not using it on those type of wires, you can see that this wire stripper does make quick work of stripping wires to whichever length you choose. There are ways to do this without using one of those tools. And for this, all you need is a blade. But you do want to be careful to avoid cutting yourself with it. And all you gotta do is press down lightly just enough to cut into the insulation and rotate the wire or the blade all around the wire. And once you went all around, lift the wire, grab the portion of the wire you just cut, and I push and pull the wire forward and back, and this separates the insulation, and all you gotta do is slide it off. With our wires prepared, next we'll need to choose which type of connector you prefer to use, or you can also solder them, which I'll show later in this video. And here we got three of the most common types of connectors. For this first type of connector, you'll want to get a heat source to get the connector up to 280 degrees Fahrenheit, preferably a heat gun. Reason for that being, this type of connector has solder in the middle, which will mount into the wires connecting them together. And it also shrinks the tubing on top of that, giving you a tight waterproof seal. And when you buy them as a kit, they do come in a variety of sizes, color coded for the size of wire they work on. Next we got our crimp style connectors, which you slide the wire in from each side, and crimp the barrel on both ends, thus giving us a nice connection between the wires. Follow that up by using a heat source to shrink the tubing on top to give us a watertight connection. And when you buy these as a kit, they also have for different size wire gauge and different ends for different functions. But for this video, we'll be focused on joining wires together. This third type of crimp connector is a PVC insulated brass connector. Problem with these is they don't keep moisture out of the connection, so you want to use these in dry situations. Well, let's get started with our first connection. Whenever you're using these type of butt connectors, you'll want to have one quarter of an inch of insulation removed. If you use any longer, the remaining wire will stick out of the connector. If you use shorter, the wire may slide out, not grabbing enough. You may notice that I twist this wire, and this keeps any wires from fraying out, and to make sure that all strands go into the connector. And once you get the wires in, You'll want to hold them from sliding out until you crimp the connector. You'll want to crimp it in this section here where it'll crimp the actual barrel inside. And the crimp part of this tool is located in the middle, so you'll want to maneuver the tool in like so while you hold the connector and the wire together. If you'll notice, it has a few areas to use, and you'll want to use a section that's color coded with the red dot for the red connector. And now you just squeeze the crimper as tight as you can. Same if you use the blue to the blue dot, yellow for the yellow. After you crimp it, You'll want to give it a little tug to make sure that it holds and has a strong connection. And now repeat for the other wire. Now we line it up to the red dot section. Squeeze. And give it a little tug. For this other connector, you'll want to follow the same process as the previous one, but the barrel portion is slightly shorter. So you want to be a little more careful where you crimp. And you'll also want to line it up to the red dot as you hold the wire and the connector together. And once lined up, you crimp them together with the Nacho Libre Anaconda Squeeze. And once again, you give it a tug to double check. And with both ends connected, you'll want to grab the heat gun to complete it and make the connection weather tight. Now when using the heat gun, you'll want to heat the connector evenly all around, moving it back and forth to avoid hot spots and keeping it from anything flammable and avoid burning yourself in the process.
And this is what you'll want your connector to look like when you're done. And as far as the wire gauge and the connector that you use, you always want to make sure you use the correct size connector and not force a bigger thicker wire into a smaller connector causing the wires to fray out. Or putting a wire into a big connector where the connector ends up loose and the wire may slide out. And if you'll notice, this wire is definitely too thin for this blue connector. And when it comes to the length of the wire, you want to avoid it being too long to where the wire sticks out or too short where it won't get crimped properly to the wire. And you can measure it up to the terminal to determine the proper length. And if you notice, there's a little dimple in the middle and that's basically where the end of the wire will hit. So any longer than that will end up sticking out. And same goes with these other terminals. You want the wire to be about the same length. Now for a third style connector. For this type I like to strip a little extra to give you a little more wire to work with since this style you have to twist wires together. First you'll want to slide the connector onto one of the wires pulling the wire completely through. Next you'll want to cross the wires so one is on top of the other like so. Now with your right hand twist the end of the wire towards you and the left hand twist the top of the wire away from you. But guess that depends which wire you put on top. And any strands that may stick up, you'll want to smooth them down so the connector doesn't push them back when you slide it over. And with that done, let's go ahead and slide the connector over the wires. And you'll want the solder portion to land right in the middle of the wires. Just like that. Now we'll need to use a heat gun moving it all around the connector till you get the solder hot enough that it begins to melt. At this point, you begin to notice that the solder is actually coating the wire, which is actually pretty cool. And if you got it hot enough, this is what your connector should look like. Strong watertight seal. Now to do our own soldering, for this you'll need a soldering iron and it doesn't have to be a station like this, although if you solder often, these work really well since it's adjustable based on what you're using it for. And added to a soldering iron, we'll need a 6040 rosin core solder which works best for electronics and wiring applications. And to put over our connection, I use a piece of heat shrink tubing that will want to cut it a little longer than the section we're going to solder, so it covers it and a little extra. Or you can use electrical tape, but it always looks best with heat shrink tubing. But you will want to get this on before you begin to solder the pieces together. Now as we did earlier, we'll want to twist both wires together. There are many ways to twist wires together, but this method works best for me and is easier to do. Now as we did earlier, we'll want to cross the wires and twist each side in the opposite direction. And this came out pretty good, but the main thing that matters is that the wire strands are intertwined to give a good connection between both ends. And now to solder. The most important part is that the soldering iron is hot enough, because if it's not, it can make doing this a whole lot harder and more frustrating. And whenever you're soldering, you want to do this in a well ventilated area and keep away from anything flammable. And of course, don't forget the safety glasses. At this point, I'm heating up the wires, so as you feed the solder it'll just absorb it into the wires. And as you feed the wire, I like to do it in a sweepy motion from one side then the other, although it's a little cold so I'm a little shaky. And you want to coat the complete section to give you the best and strongest connection. And that just about does it. Let's see how we did. Came out pretty good if I do say so myself.
This connection is not coming apart. Now all that remains is covering it with heat shrink tubing and using the heat gun on it. And that does it for this connection. And as an added bonus, I decided to include these quick splice connections that allow you to tap into a wire without having to cut it. So if you're trying to tap into a wire signal, say for voltage, ground, or a signal from a particular sensor, these can be very useful. And the way these work is you slide it onto the wire you want to tap into, and just next to it, you'll want to slide the wire you want to get the signal as well. Now once in position, you'll want to close the clip in turn pressing the blades into the wires. But to make it easier, I just use pliers to squeeze it closed. And this is what it should look like after it splices into the wires. But let's open it up and see how it actually works. And as you can see, the blades cut in through the insulation on the side, contacting the wire strands inside, sending a signal to the wire next to it. And if I use a no-meter, I can verify that it's one complete connection from the yellow wire to the white wire. Well that just about does it for this video. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If so, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.